today we'll be talking about a very twisted individual as we dive into the story of Donald Henry Gaskins, somebody who will have you questioning what kind of things one has to do to earn the nickname of the meanest man in America. Donald Henry Gaskins Jr., born Donald Henry Parrott Jr., was an American serial killer and sexual abuser from South Carolina who stabbed, shot, drowned, and poisoned more than a dozen people in his lifetime. But before his convictions for murder, Gaskins had already had a long history of criminal activities resulting in prison sentences for assault, burglary, and statutory rape. Basically, this dude was a complete scumbag all around, not just murdering people, but everything in between. Donald Henry Gaskins was born in Florence County, South Carolina to Yulia Parrott. He was the last in a string of illegitimate children for her. Gaskins was small for his age and immediately gained the nickname Pee Wee. As an adult, he would only uh, get to like 5'5", five five, basically 5'4", five 5'5", four, five five. that's about 1.6 meters, and he only weighed about 130 pounds, or almost like 60 kilograms. Gaskin's early life was characterized by a great deal of neglect from his mother and abuse by a male relative. His mother apparently took so little interest in him that the first time he had learned his given name, Donald, was when he first read it out loud at his first court appearance. Can you imagine not even knowing your own name? Like, nobody has even talked to you, nobody's shown you enough attention in your whole life that you just didn't even remember your name until you, the first time you pulled a crime or something like that and you ended up in court like bro that is <laughs> you definitely are gonna have some issues after that let's be real gaskins was often described as a great manipulator and con artist who was street smart with a keen sense of humor and a friendly entertaining personality which honestly is um just a given for a lot of serial killers they seem to be super charismatic it's a way that they get close to people at the end of the day, you know what I mean? They kind of draw you in with their personality and then they end up kind of offing you, so. When he was only one years old, Gaskins reportedly drank a bottle of kerosene which had caused him to have convulsions until the age of three. In adolescence, Gaskins engaged in a violent crime spree with a group of fellow delinquents which included burglaries, assaults, and a gang rape, so. This kid was just on a terrible path from the beginning, like, you know what I mean? He was messed up. Um, Obviously, it is partly his fault, but dude, this kid had a shit upbringing too, so I'm sure all these factors played into the fact that he just became this ginormous scumbag later in life. Or, honestly, before he was even 13, dude, he was already a scumbag. At age 13, Gaskins was convicted for assaulting a young woman by hitting her in the head with an axe when she caught him breaking into her family's home. He was sentenced to five years in reform school, or basically like an all-boys school kind of thing, um, basically juvie, but... He was so young that obviously you can't even put him in jail at this point so the name of it was the south carolina industrial school for white boys in florence where he was regularly assaulted by his fellow inmates and i'm not talking about just getting beat up i'm talking about obviously you know how it goes after escaping from the reform school getting married and voluntary returning to complete his sentence gaskin was released in 1951 at the age of 18. so Think he had done all this crazy stuff, all this terrible stuff that he has done and has had happen to him, all that before the age of 18. After that, he briefly worked on a tobacco plantation until he was arrested in 1953 for attacking a teenage girl with a hammer over an alleged insult. He was then sentenced to six years imprisonment at the South Carolina Penitentiary. So, there, Gaskins earned his fellow inmate respect by killing the most feared man in the prison named Hazel Brazel. In what Gaskins claimed was a self defense, and basically, as a result, Gaskin received an extra three years in prison for involuntary manslaughter. But from that point on, he ended up becoming the aggressor instead of the victim. Whereas in the reform school, he was the one kind of getting bullied. In this prison, now that he's grown, he's kind of the one doing the bullying. He's the one doing the attacking. He is the scumbag now. He ended up escaping from prison again in 1955 by hiding in the back of a garbage truck where he fled to Florida. And once he got there, he ended up taking up employment uh, with a traveling carnival, which makes a ton of sense because this guy is a fucking clown. So kind of makes the most sense. He found his home at the end of the day. Anyways, the clown career did not last long. He was rearrested, remanded to custody, and ended up being paroled again in August 1961. Now, following this release from prison, Gaskins reverted back to committing burglaries and fencing stolen property to make money. Two years after his parole, though, he was arrested for the rape of a 12-year-old girl but he basically ran away before um, the sentence actually happened while he was awaiting sentence. He During his arraignment, Gaskins escaped from custody by jumping out of a second story window of the Florence County Courthouse, injuring his leg in the process. After stealing a car from the parking lot, he eluded police for days before he was apprehended. Gaskins was later rearrested in Georgia and sentenced to eight years. So still not enough for this guy, let's be honest. Um, this point he's like what a two three time felon not even counting the times before 18 
he's beat people he's got a multiple sexual assault cases like dude this guy is a complete scumbag and they're only giving him eight years like dude you could probably smoke weed in some of the southern states and catch like five years for that so this to me is ridiculous and that's not even the most ridiculous part because actually he was paroled again in november of 1968 so you gotta think these people are letting him out like this is unreal these people are like thinking that this guy is good enough to go back into society twice at this point he's escaped prison at least twice and he's still gone released like this is unbelievable upon his release gaskins moved to the town of sumter south carolina and began working with a roofing company gaskins said his first non-prison related murder victim was a blonde female hitchhiker whom he tortured and murdered in september of 1969 before sinking her body in a swamp in his memoirs he says all i could think about is how i could do anything i wanted to her which is just like terrifying and downright disgusting to hear like I don't know. I don't want to hear any more of this guy's thoughts, to be real with you. This hitchhiker was to be the first of many he said he picked up and killed while driving around the coastal highways of the American South. Gaskin classified these victims as coastal kills, people both men and women who he killed purely for pleasure, on average approximately once every six weeks, when he went hunting to quell his feelings of bothersomeness, is what he called it. So, basically, stay out of this guy's way. Anytime he's feeling a little bit pissed off, a little bit bothered, you might be one of the bodies he catches at the end of the day if you live on the coastal south. That is fucking terrifying. Um, no wonder people down there got guns. Let's be real with you. Like, well, especially knowing people around people like this were around. Like, bro, are you kidding me? I'm going everywhere with my stuff. For sure. He said he tortured and mutilated his victims while attempting to keep them alive for as long as possible. He confessed to killing these victims using a variety of methods, including stabbing, suffocation, mutilation, and even cannibalizing some of them. So Dude, this guy even went so far as to eat some of his own victims, according to his words. Now, this is this is where we're going to kind of get into some murky stuff, all right? So, just be warned. Gaskins later confessed to killing 80 to 90 such victims, although the statements that he said um, have never been cooperated. Basically, we don't even know if there are any coastal kills, because in his memoirs, Gaskins said that he committed coastal kills every six weeks yet contradicts this statement later in the book by stating he felt the overpowering need to seek out and commit a coastal kill by the 10th day of each calendar month. So basically, all over the place, he is just kind of contradicting himself, saying this, that. Nobody really knows if these are actually true. He also specifically named three further individuals who, who he whom classified as his serious murders, an African-American couple he named Eddie and Bertie Brown, who were aged about 24 and 20, um, that he murdered in 1972 and buried behind the tenant house, which is a location that Gaskins failed to precisely pinpoint in his autobiography beyond one stating that it was a shortcut to go around Columbia. And a man named Horace Jones, who was around four years old, who he said he murdered in 1974. So at this point, dude, he's saying that he's killing people every six weeks. He's talking about he's killing people the 10th of every month. He's talking about these are my only serious murders. Um, He's just basically contradicting himself all over the place and at this point this is where his story kind of starts to fall apart especially when he's talking about he has 80 to 90 coastal kills like i don't know maybe this guy's just a little full of himself um i mean i'm glad he's not obviously had that many bodies but just the fact that you're trying to go around like kind of hyping yourself up like that that's a little crazy there is no evidence to support any of the statements made by gaskins that he had committed any murders other than that of hazel brazel and the 14 other confirmed victims whose bodies had been found around and identified and whose law enforcement records and Gaskin's sworn testimony sustained. So basically, uh, what all that even means is Gaskin's really only had 14 confirmed kills or confirmed murders that he actually had done. He is trying to take credit for a whole lot more, like he said, 80 to 90. In November 1970, Gaskin's committed the first of a series of confirmed murders, primarily people who he knew and killed for personal reasons. His first confirmed victims were his own niece, Janice Kirby, who was about 15 at the time, and her friend Patricia Ann Alsbrook, who was about 17, both of whom he ended up beating to death. Now, he said he was enraged at their drug abuse, while others say that he was attempting to sexually assault them while living in Sumner. 1971. In 1971, he poisoned Martha Ann Dix, aged 20, in March of 1971, either because she said Pee Wee was the father of her unborn child, or because she was an alleged drug dealer who supplied Kirby and Alsbrook with drugs. If you believe his story that he was pissed off about his nieces and her friend's drug abuse, 
then maybe you go with that she's a drug dealer or if not maybe you just think oh she was pregnant with his unborn child and he figured let's get rid of them martha to make some money or maybe to to get some things from peewee agreed to be part of this threesome with one of his wives and uh, with with peewee and uh, the belief was that she became pregnant Gaskins was an overt racist and he raped and drowned both Doreen Hope Dempsey, age 22, and her two-year-old daughter, Robin Michelle Dempsey, in June of 1973. Gaskins had befriended Doreen Dempsey several years prior and was angry upon hearing that she had become pregnant a second time with a black guy. All right, she had been living with Gaskins' friend Johnny Sellers and his brother Carl Sellers in North Charleston, South Carolina, and they ended up bringing her to Gaskins' home in Prospect and left her there to speak with Gaskins about staying with him for a short time while she was pregnant. Upset that Doreen was having a second biracial child, Gaskins responded by walking her to his backyard pond where he drowned both the mother and the toddler. Like I said, dude, this guy just gets worse and worse every single fucking year. Like this guy is getting worse with age. It's not fine wine. He's just getting more and more scummish, more like, dude, like this guy, these are the type of people that need death row. Like, let's be serious. In June 1974, Gaskins shot his friend and criminal associate, Johnny Sellers, the same exact Johnny that just dropped off Doreen at his house the year prior, all right? Now, he shot him in the back of the head and stabbed to death Johnny's ex-girlfriend, Jesse Ruth Judy. And he did all this after Sellers asked for money he was owed from the sale of the stolen boat that they had basically stolen together. Gaskins feared Sellers would reveal Gaskins was also involved in an auto theft ring and Jesse Judy was murdered at the same time because she could have told police about Gaskins' criminal activities, including murdering her boyfriend, which, gee, I wonder if she would have done that. Like, that's weird. Now, in 1975, this is where the majority of the murders took place. First up is Silas Barnell Yates, who was 45 at the time and was murdered in February of 1975 by having his throat slit in a murder-for-hire scheme. The forensics showed that it was by knife, but Gaskins disputed this, saying that it was done by a karate chop. There is no way you got that crazy of a karate chop. All right, let's be real. Like the forensic people are saying, oh, his throat is slit with a knife. And here's this asshole talking about, nah, man, I karate chopped him. Like, <laughs> fuck out of here, cuz like, I'm not listening to that at all. Yates was in a dispute with his ex-girlfriend, Suzanne Kipper Owens, and she and her husband, John Owens, paid Gaskin $1,500 to murder Yates. Also in 1975, Diane Bellamy Neely, age 25, was separated from her husband, Walter Neely, who was one of Gaskin's closest friends and criminal co-conspirators. On April 10, 1975, Gaskin stabbed to death Diane Bellamy and shot to death her boyfriend, Avery Leroy Howard, age 34. Among other reasons, Gaskins murdered Diane Bellamy because she had threatened to report to the police that Gaskins was allowing underage teenagers to have sex in his house. Letting teenagers have sex at his house, dude, what does that even mean, bro? You're hanging out with teenagers? Like, what the fuck is going on? Avery Howard was murdered because he asked for money to pay attorneys and cover legal expenses following his arrest for fraud and auto theft. Basically, both people for different reasons, but they were in a relationship, so. Gaskins worried Avery Howard would tell police about Gaskins' criminal activities. Kim Gelkin, age 13, was stabbed to death to keep her from telling police Gaskin had moved her from North Charleston without permission and to keep her from telling police that she was being sexually abused by several adult men, including Gaskins. Dude, literally, like, I don't even know what to say. I ain't got nothing left to say. So last up for the murders in 1975 is Dennis Bellamy, age 27, and John Henry Knight, age 15. They were half-brothers, and Diane Bellamy was their sister. Within minutes of each other, Gaskins shot the two brothers in the back of the head on October 10, 1975. Gaskins had promised to pay Dennis Bellamy for some stolen guns. When confronted by Bellamy, however, he responded by offering to return the guns from the woods behind his home. He took Bellamy into the woods to retrieve the guns, but ended up shooting him in the back of the head. John Henry Knight was directed to the same area, alleged to meet his brother, but was also murdered to ensure that he could never speak about the crimes that were going on. And basically, this is just the biggest pattern. Um, he's just killing anybody. He's probably super paranoid. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he was like schizophrenic or something at this point, because he's just killing anybody that he thinks could ever snitch on him. Gaskins was arrested on November 14th, 1975, when a criminal associate named Walter Neely confessed to police that he had knowledge of Gaskins killing Dennis Bellamy and Johnny Knight. Neely confessed to police that Gaskins had confided in him to have killed several people who had been listed as missing people during the previous five years. Basically, he was just admitting to his crimes to this guy, 
which is weird because you'd think that, oh shit, now this guy knows, now I have to kill him too. What's probably going to happen? Let's not fake it, all right? It's probably gonna happen. And on December 4th, 1975, Neely led police to land near Gaskin's home in Prospect, where police discovered the bodies of eight of his victims. Gaskins was tried on one charge of murder on May 24th, 1976, and found guilty on May 28th and was sentenced to death, which was later commuted to life in prison when the South Carolina General Assembly's 1974 ruling on capital punishment was changed to conform to the U.S. Supreme Court guidelines for death penalties in other states. Basically, this guy's the luckiest fuck in the world. Instead of getting killed, which he should, honestly, let's be real, he should have been put to death, for sure. The just, the changing of the law came to, into effect and now he's just serving out life, so he gets to live out the rest of his life. I don't know, I'm hoping he had the shittiest fucking life at that point, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta, you gotta hope that this person has a shitty fucking life. You can't let this dude live like that. What? Not in my mind. That's crazy. On September 2nd, 1982, Gaskins committed another murder for which he earned the title of the meanest man in America. While incarcerated in the high security block at the South Carolina Correctional Institute, Gaskins killed a death row inmate named Rudolph Tyner, who had received a sentence for killing an elderly couple during a, uh, basically a messed up armed robbery of their store and basically they ended up dying. Gaskins was hired to commit this murder by Tony Simo, the son of Tyner's victims. Simo was initially charged with murder but pled guilty to lesser charges and was sentenced to eight years in prison. He ended up getting paroled in 1986. That is Simo, that's the kid of the victims of Tyner originally. So he ended up just happened to hire the meanest man in America, Gaskins, to kill his parents' killer. Hopefully that made some sort of sense because at this point this is just like a revolving door of people hiring this dude to kill other people. It's too much. Gaskins initially made several unsuccessful attempts to kill Tyner by lacing his food and drink with poison before he opted to use explosives to kill him. Yes, you heard that right. Gaskin rigged a device similar to a portable radio in Tyner's cell and told Tyner this would allow them to communicate between cells. When Tyner followed Gaskin's instructions, which ended up having a bunch of C4 plastic explosives in it, um, which obviously he didn't know, to his ear at an agreed time, Gaskins detonated the explosives from his cell and ended up killing Tyler. He later said that the last thing he heard was me laughing. Dude, this guy is fucking insane. This guy needs to get put down. Like, there's no other way to put it. Oh my god. Gaskins was tried for Tyner's murder and was sentenced to death. It was the first time in the history of South Carolina that a white man was sentenced to death for the murder of a black man. So, he made some history. Thank god this guy was the first one. Scumbag. Now, while on death row, Gaskins said he committed between 100 and 110 murders, including that of Margaret Peg Cotino, the 13-year-old daughter of then South Carolina State Senator James Cotino, uh, and basically, there's a bunch of other bodies he said he caught, all right? He claimed 100 murders. You gotta think about that. This is one dude. Only 14 confirmed people that he actually had killed, and he's claiming that he has 100 to 110. Now, the rest of them are super disputed. There's no evidence to support these statements at all. He's just a scumbag claiming that he did all this probably just to get some sick kick out of it. But anyways, the good news. We got some good news. Gaskins was executed on September 6, 1991 at 1 10 a.m. in the electric chair, hours after he tried to kill himself by slitting his wrist. His last words were, I'll let my lawyers talk for me. I'm ready to go. And honestly, thank God, because I was ready for you to go to my guy. Like, A1 scumbag, the meanest man in America, dude. What the fuck? The biggest scumbag in America, more like it. Like, holy shit. Kind of glad you're dead. Um, Yeah, anybody that heard of this guy, let me know. Uh, I don't know, bro. I'm kind of, <laughs> my brain's a little broken right now. So I'll leave you with that. Make sure you like, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. Get laid. Peace. I'll see y'all soon.